Hey there guys, Chris from 6++ and welcome to our series playing the primary, in which we focus on the primary playing aspect of 40k. Today's mission is number 32, Death and Zeal. We're going to be looking at how to go about projecting your score for the primary, what the actual focus is and of the mission and how difficult it is to play, um, as well as anything specific that you need to know. Um, so yeah, let's crack on. Death and Zeal is a five objective mission in a table quarters deployment. You score four points for holding one objective, four points for holding two, and of course four points for holding more than your opponent. The mission tertiary gives you two options. In your turn you can either hold an objective you didn't at the start of the turn, or hold all the objectives, but that's quite unlikely, or kill a unit on an objective and you'll score two points. Do both and you'll score three. Simple. This creates an interesting dynamic that we will discuss later. One final point is that objectives are sticky. This means that if you hold an objective in your command phase with obsec, then you can move off it and still hold it next turn, unless your opponent steals it back. So, how easy is it to score on this mission? Well, as with most missions, the goal will be to consistently hold two objectives a turn to score eight points. Obviously, you hope to hold your home field objective, so then you need to make a decision on where to push for the second, and this will depend on your army. If you look at this UKTC terrain layout, you'll see that there is one objective around 14 inches from where I can deploy and then move to get into cover and hide, which is the one just above if you're starting on the left hand side. As a Harlequins player, that's easy for me and will be my target as I hope to turn the board into hammer and anvil long ways. The other objective, the one if I've got the bottom left hand deployment zone is off to the right hand side, is about 22 inches away if I want to be safe. So that could be an option for Harlequins, but not for many armies, and it also puts me closer to the enemy territory where I don't want to be with most of my force. As such, you need to be picking one objective that adheres to your overall game plan. Of course, many armies there will want to lock down the middle with blocks of nastiness as they bulldoze down towards you. And this links to the next question. How easy is it to hold more? Well, realistically, as always, it depends entirely on your army. Some armies, you know, your Death Guards, your Death Wing, maybe even your Chaos with the um, unkillable Terminator bricks, they're more than happy to march straight down the middle and say, come on then if you think you're hard enough. Um, in which case, they've probably got a really good shot at holding more for most of the game, which means that they're probably going to score that 45. Um, so that is something you are going to be having to consider, because um, a lot of armies don't want to have a say in that. If those armies that don't want to have a say in the middle objective are playing against each other, then hold more is very unlikely, because people will just be holding their side of the board and trying to pick the enemy off and it'll come down to whoever goes second has the best chance at scoring that. Um, so yeah, trying to time that push if you're going first to make it really hard for them to get that little bit of a secondary, uh, that primary um, kind of advantage is something to consider. So the tertiary offers up quite an interesting game of cat and mouse because we're trying to hold an objective, which we didn't before, um, and or kill an opponent off an objective. So if you think how this game would pan out, probably turn one, both players are going to move to the nearest objective off to the side um, and they're going to get two points for holding an objective. If they've done a good job of hiding, it's going to be really hard to knock their opponent off of an objective or kill a unit on an objective. So. The person who's gone first on turn two has to think, well, how can I score this two points? Well, the probably easiest um, option is to go stick something on the middle. The person going second then says, thank you very much, I'll kill that unit on the middle and I'll score my two points. The issue here is that both players have scored two points. However, the person who's gone first has had to sacrifice a unit to do it, which again plays into the advantage of going second. So that is something to consider. If you are going first, you might well think, well, actually on my turn two, I will sacrifice my two points to see if I can make my opponent try and stick a unit on um, that middle objective. So then I can kind of flip the script and I can be the one shooting them off it. This sort of play will depend entirely on your forces and how valuable your resources are. Um, if you have, you know, 20, 25 MSU units, then you're more than happy to just 
to keep sticking stuff onto that um, objective, be shot off it. But if you're able to make a play and kill stuff on the outskirt objectives, then you'll be getting your three points. And that is also something to consider. Obviously, depending on terrain, you might well be just able to blast your opponent off objectives all day long. Um, in which case, you know, you're going to be scoring your twos and threes pretty simply. So with that discussion out of the way, what is a projection looking like for Death and Zeal? Well, as long as the game is relatively close, um, you'd be hoping to consistently be scoring your eights. Um, so that gets you 32. Then let's think that we'd definitely be looking to score twos consistently across the board in this game as well. So that puts us on 42 out of 45 by pretty much just pl by playing Warhammer, let's face it. Um, so are we going to be able to max that? Well, all you need to do is score three rather than two points um, in three rounds. That'll get you 45. You need to go second and get a hold more at the end of the game. That'll get you 45. Um, realistically, as is quite often the case in these five die missions, um, both players are going to be scoring um, over 40 points and it's going to be um, coming down to the secondaries in terms of who wins this game. It's very easy to forget that this mission is sticky objectives. Um, it's the only one which is for the five die missions and there are quite a lot of them. Um, so most people I play against kind of forget that. Is it that important? Probably not. Although if you know you're able to move up down like if you've again if you've deployed in the bottom left hand corner and you've moved up to the top if you can then just stick an obsec on it and then move forward that can be quite nice. Um, and as I mentioned in the Data Sky Salvage mission, um, having forward moving um, or pre-game moving units or forward deploying units, you know, that's quite nice, isn't it? Stick a unit of um, kind of like infiltrators or whatever on that objective um, and then just kind of move off it in turn one and be a nuisance and screen and whatever. Um, having that as a play is quite handy. So just something to be aware of. If you see your opponent moving off objectives and you're like, oh, I oh, you now hold this actually, and they might just be think, realize that and be playing a bit smarter. So every little counts, right? Um, so yeah, just bear that in mind. So there we go, that is Death and Zeal. And as discussed, we should be looking at a minimum of 40 points, but more likely 42, 43, 44, 45 points on our primary. Um, it's a relatively simple mission to be scoring plus 40 on. Um, so hopefully that helps you when you are projecting your scores at the start of your game um, for your early turns um, and working out how to try and turn the tide or hold on to the win. Um, that is mission three of the LGT set, which we are building up to. We've got two more missions to go. Um, hopefully you're enjoying these. If you are, give us a like, give us a subscribe, check out the description where you can see our link tree, which has access to our Facebook page, our Instagram page, all that sort of thing. And uh, take care and we'll see you again soon. Goodbye.